thank you. I always get a kick out of uh, going up against, uh, seeing myself going up against a Darth Vader. I think it's a very funny moment because I'm one of the few individuals who's, who uh, survived <laughs> Darth Vader in his antics. Anyway, hello everybody and thank you for coming. And this has been, uh, I was really looking forward to coming to uh, uh, Halifax. I didn't realize there were so many people in Halifax. <laughs> but anyway, it's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Guys always have great questions. Obviously, the microphone is is there in the center, so feel free to line up, and we'll we'll start taking them in a minute. But uh, if you'll indulge me, I've got a few questions uh, for Billy to start. Obviously, something that is on our minds. We know that uh, Lucasfilm uh, sold the rights to Star Wars to Disney, and that they're they've already set a date for the next film. I think it's December fifteenth or December eighteenth. There we go, twenty fifteen. So. When is it? December 18th, 2015. They've already announced, they haven't even started shooting, and they've already released the date that you can see it in theaters. So, are we going to see Lando back in there? Do you know anything? What can you tell us at this point? I really can't tell you anything. I have no idea. <laughs> everybody else knows what's going on. But there is a Twitter. It's always like that, though. Yeah. Find out kind of. Yeah. Late. Well, I remember when we were shooting Return of the Jedi, we were out in the desert in Arizona, and uh, you know, and we were trying to dis they were trying to, to uh, prevent people from knowing that the, that the company was uh, a Star Wars company. So we had it was called Blue Harvest. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but everybody knew what was going on. I mean, there were airplanes flying out overhead, you know, <laughs> knowing exactly where we were, the location where we were the shooting location. So uh, I'm always amazed at that, the fact that all, all of the people who have been big fans of uh, Star Wars know more about what, what's going on than I think the actors did. Well, the franchise was already very established when, when you joined for the, the second film, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, but did you anticipate it having this longevity, this sustained fandom surrounding Star Wars? You know, there are now kids who are, you know, I was in utero when I saw Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Kids who you know are well, born. My grandkids. My grandkids. Uh, yeah, you were telling me this morning. Yeah. They're into it. So, what is it about Star Wars that continues this passion of fandom? Well, you know, I, I think first of all, it's iconic. I mean, it, it, it was the beginning of uh, the precursor or the beginning of of the, uh, the, the whole sci-fi. You know, like, Blockbuster film yeah, movement, yeah. the explosion of sci-fi. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think it sort of set, set the pace for a lot of the uh, movies that are being made today, sci-fi movies being made today. But also, it, you know, it's, I think it talks about, it, you know, all the kind of concerns that we have each day in our lives, you know, good and evil and all that sort of stuff. It's, there's a lot of mythology there that I think that we all can somehow relate to. Absolutely. Um, and if you do want to see Lando in the next film, there is a uh, campaign. Uh, you can tweet with the hashtag BringBackLando. <laughs> and you can follow Billy D. Williams on Twitter, at RealBDW. Uh, um, no problem. Plug, plug, plug. Shameless self promoter. Uh, let me ask you, every time I've interviewed uh, anyone who has had, had any relation to Star Wars, I have to ask about George Lucas, because he is kind of a divisive icon now. There are some people who kind of resent the fact that we had the prequels that didn't quite live up to some people's expectations. Um, I haven't had the chance to meet him yet. What's your take on George Lucas? You know, if you were describing him to, to a friend and not in an audience, how would you describe him? Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, he's a, he's a, a brilliant individual. Um, uh, he came up with something really extraordinary. And um, I'm always curious to see what he's 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 uh, going to do next. You know, um, now even though there's, there's some criticism about what he does, you know, like the, the last three films, for instance. Uh, 
I think he, you know, uh, he, he can afford to take the liberty to, uh, to experiment. And that's what he does. I, I, he's an artist, as well as a, an extraordinary businessman. Um, so I, I can say, I just say hats off to a person like that. Well, you are an artist as well, beyond uh, being an actor, you've also released an album, and you have done some amazing paintings. If you haven't seen his work, do yourself a favor and, and give it a Google. Um, so why did you take an interest in art beyond just, just acting, and, and what do you enjoy so much about it? Well, I started out as a painter. Uh, I grew up in New York City, and uh, I, I went to a, a high school called uh, Music and Art High School, my sister and I. And um, we were art majors. And uh, when I left Music and Art High School, I went to, I got a scholarship to a school called the National Academy of Design for the Fine Arts, where I spent two years on the scholarship painting. And I was, at 18, 19 years of age, I was, um, uh, I was nominated for Guggenheim and uh, well, won a Hall Garden, uh, which is comparable to uh, Guggenheim. And um, so painting has been, and also I have a painting in the Smithsonian in, in Washington. They own one of my pieces. Um, Kansas City Jazz Museum and, and also the Schomburg in New York. And I've been exhibiting for a long time. I don't think, I haven't done very much exhibiting uh, recently, but uh, I have some paintings at the, uh, a gallery in Toronto though. Uh, the Brian List Gallery. In, on, um, uh, if you're familiar with Toronto, it's uh, York, Yorkville. Trendy. Yeah. Very nice area. Yes. <laughs> I know. But uh, painting has uh, been very much a part of my life. And I know we were talking earlier. You said you, you you're a. I knew uh, acrylic, kind of pop art inspired. Actually, one of my recent uh, paintings was a domo converged with Yoda. I, I kind of merge worlds, that sort of thing. But I'm nowhere near your skill level. Found before. I'd be curious. Do you have a website? Uh, I do. AJFry.com. I don't think I have paintings up there, but I have them on my Facebook page, my fan page. We'll share links after. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to grab drinks with Billy D. Williams tonight. Uh, but you guys got questions for him on the floor. Let's go to this little guy here. My question is, if you had a starship, what would you call it? <laughs> Well, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> Something art inspired or uh, one of your grandkids, maybe? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> Finnegan and Lucy. <laughs> Those are my grandkids. Just gonna add like a number at the end. Finnegan and Lucy 3000. Sounds like a doctor. Sounds like a production. My question is if you could be any other Star Wars character, who would you be and why? No, Lando is it. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot of these panels with, with actors, uh, you know, in Star Wars. And when asked that same question, they all say Lando. <laughs> like, I always wanted to be Lando. That was a great character. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think Gary Fisher said it at that fan expo this year, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> there you go. If, Other... not, if not Lando, I, I want to be Princess Leia. <laughs> You worked with both Irv Kirshner and Richard Marquand uh, on both movies. Um, what were their directing styles like? Were they overly different from one another? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, Richard Marquand, uh, he didn't seem very secure, as I recall, in, in, in his role. Uh, but certainly Irv Kirshner was one of the great filmmakers of, in the 20th century. Uh, he came up with some really wonderful, uh, interesting ideas in, in his career. And he was also a very good artist. Um, but I had a tremendous, uh, tremendous um, admiration for uh, her person. So, quick second one. Did you keep any of your props? Yeah, I got a few things. <laughs> 
Thank you. The Millennium Falcon Park Five. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know what I got? I got a, uh, 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 an Ewok? Yeah, Ewok head. <laughs> I talked George out of it. <laughs> Is it mounted like taxidermy? <laughs> yeah, kind of like. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you keep a cape? No, I should. Oh, yeah, I should have got that cake. Get on that. Thanks. I have a question, and I was wondering what it was like working under Tim Burton for the Batman movie. Mm, it was good. It was, it was fun. You know, he was always busy. Um, but it was a, that was a real interesting experience, especially when you saw the uh, a Gothic City. I mean, it was amazing. You know, it was like this huge thing. It was like a real city. And on, a, on a lot, and I, that's you know you, when you think about we always talk about the actors and all the people in front of the camera, but there are all of these people behind the camera that are just really pretty extraordinary people who do extraordinary things, you know, like all of these crafts people. So yeah, it's a pretty amazing uh, experience. You're Let's stay with Batman for just a moment, if I may ask. Uh, you know, around the time that those original Batman films from Tim Burton were coming out, a lot of people were like, superhero films? I don't know, this seems kind of weird. Are these going to work? And now, of course, we're just inundated with, you know, superhero films. Uh, you didn't get to reprise uh, the role of Harvey Dent in the follow-ups. But what is your take on the current trend of, of superhero films? Do you, do you appreciate them? Have you been following the Batman franchise? What are your thoughts? Uh, well, I yeah, I haven't really been following any of it, but uh, they're very entertaining, obviously. And, you know, people really enjoy them. So uh, it's just an extension of uh, reading a comic book. So now you can see the whole. And, and I think eventually, what's going to happen is that we're going to have a hologram character instead of seeing people on the screen. We're going to be sitting in the audience like this, and all of the. Uh, You'll almost kind of interact with what's going on in, uh, in telling a story. That's where we're going, boy. <laughs> All right, thanks for the point. What did you think of your experience uh, doing Cal Lando Calrissian again for the uh, Robot Chicken Star Wars specials? Oh, well, I had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> uh, Seth Green, those crazy people. <laughs> crazy stuff. Although I, 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 there was one uh, robot chicken thing that I did uh, not, uh, where I was in a supermarket. Yeah! yeah. That was pretty fun. I, I, they, that, that was uh, as a result. Screaming of, over to Tic Tacs. Yeah, because I'm always running into people. I remember I had one little 10 year old kid uh, who <laughs> accused me of uh, betraying me. Han Solo. <laughs> I said, my God, if this kid had a gun in his hand, I could have him. <laughs> Thank you. But that's that's the, where that whole idea came from. Well, thank you very much. I'd like to start by saying the highlight of my Halcon experience, and thank you so much for coming. Well, they asked me to come on, and, and you know, I, I I do a lot of these uh, shows where I come on and uh, cameos where I sort of parody myself, which I, I don't mind doing because I think I'm a walking absurdity anyhow. <laughs> uh, so it's fun for me to get up there and make fun of myself. So. Thank you very much. And it's a compliment, actually, when you really come right down to it. Do you think that you know your your depth of Talent is perhaps what leads to the fact that you're often asked to play yourself, cameo as yourself, because you know people think of you as Lando and um, you know the spokesperson for Cold 45. <laughs> but you're you're not just characters; you yourself are you know an artist who's interested in a great variety of things. Do you think that that has let you transcend sort of being just an actor and into sort of an icon? I don't know how these things happen. They just happen. <laughs> Uh, I'm like this all the time. You know? <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, wow. You know, you, you, you know, the character I 
I, the, the person I always see myself is that. Uh, you ever read uh, Salinger's uh, uh, Catching a Ride? Yeah, not right now. No. Well, so we, well, that character, that's how I always see myself, is this sort of person that's sort of going through life, going, you know, having these experiences and, uh, and then getting into trouble and getting out of trouble, and, but in a very kind of uh, innocent fashion. I, I'm really a very, um, I, even at my age, even at this stage in my life, I, I'm pretty naive about a lot of things. You know, it's, uh, I was so protected as a kid growing up. I, you know, I kind of found myself sort of bumbling through life. Sort of walking into walls and things like that. Hi, um, I'd like to know, um, what was it like being on the set of Star Wars? Oh, it was real. It was a lot of fun. It was like being in a, in a candy store. <laughs> yeah, it was like, uh, you know, to to go on set, you know, and we shot most of it in uh, in London. So they used maybe four stages, um, you know, like. For instance, you know, they, they have one total uh, setup of a of the Millennium Falcon, and then they have pieces. So to go through all, to see all of that, it's like, you know, in a big toy store, you know, with big toys. <laughs> so it was fun. So what did you end up doing during your downtime? Did you hang out with Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill, or did you go back to your trailer and paint something awesome? <laughs> Well, everybody was sort of busy doing whatever they were doing. We all sort of had our own separate lives. But uh, I think I remember once Carrie had a big party <laughs> uh, where she was staying. But um, no, we, 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 we all remain. I mean, we see, occasionally see each other now, and we just sort of, it's all been very nice, very warm. Thanks to the floor. Hello. Uh, you wanted to be um, Prince of Bear, if you were to be another uh, character other than... Uh, I was just kidding about that. Though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to say, now I have an image of Lando in that slave girl. <laughs> 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 and then I'm In case people didn't hear that, the question is, were you disappointed that Lando didn't end up getting the girl in Star Wars? He should have got the girl. Oh, <laughs> in some sense, I did. <laughs> Even if you put Bespin aside, have you kept any contact or friendship with Harrison Ford s since after the filming of Star Wars? Oh, you know, well, I see him occasionally. You know, he's, he's busy flying around in his airplane. <laughs> but uh, every, when we see each other, it's always been very pleasant. Thank you very much. You're welcome. What was it like working with Harrison Ford? Very, very nice. We had a very, we had a very nice relationship. Yeah. Thank you. Do you think he, uh, Harrison Ford is the only person that I have not yet had the chance to interview. He's very, very guarded in his personal life. You've obviously hung out with him without, you know, microphones being present. Well, I guess, I don't know if you said microphones are present. I've never hung out with him. Sure. But you've worked with him, you know, maybe chatted with him around the craft table. Why do you think he's so guarded, or what is it about him that, that makes him that? <laughs> so, took me a while, <clears throat> but managed to track it down here in Halifax. <laughs> Excuse me, folks. <laughs> 
And as you can hear, I get I had to change my voice uh, changer along the way. That's how long I've spent tracking this person. <clears throat> anyway, actually, I will destroy the illusion because I do have a question. <laughs> First of all, uh, Halcon board director Travers Beale. Welcome to Halifax. Welcome to Halcon. We hope you're having a great time here. I do have a question, actually. Um, with the next episode, episode seven, uh, have you uh, had a chance to share any of the uh, goings on or seen any indications? I, no. I was on Jimmy Kimmel's one uh, evening with. Uh, Shatner. Yeah, we were sitting in the audience, and, uh, and J.J. Abrams was on stage, and the question came up about uh, Star Wars, and we were sort of a plant in the audience. So uh, I, I jumped up and said, I got a great idea. Why don't you go two hours to Lando, you know, surrounded by a lot of women? <laughs> I don't know why I've always been I wish I could have been in the audience, too. Um, but, um, uh, it, was a, it was a cute little moment, but um, my idea, actually, if that if they choose to bring me back, is to have a daughter who's a Jedi, or, ooh, or if not a da daughter is a Jedi, a uh, son is a villain. But your idea was to have a, a daughter as a Jedi and a son as a villain together. You know, I said, okay. hmm. personally, I like that. Anybody here like that? I like that. I just like to say I'm a huge fan, and I was wondering what was your favorite scene to shoot in Star Wars movies? Um. Well, well, the, you know, I I got a kick out of I always get a kick out of, of me going up against um, Darth Vader. Uh, uh, that's one of my favorite moments, and certainly one of my favorite moments is meeting Princess Leia. And one of my favorite moments is uh, is uh, when I get choked by by the Wookiee. <laughs> and, um, and then, of course, in, in Return of the Jedi, being the you know being a, having that wonderful heroic moment of blowing up the uh, Death Star, you know. So there are a lot of little things. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Hi. Um, out of your entire acting career, what was your favorite memory and why? Well, certainly you know, when I did Brian's song, I don't know if you've all seen that. But, uh, that was a uh, real classic, and I was nominated for an Emmy for that one. Um, uh, I just saw a movie the other night on TV that I did uh, about baseball about the Negro Leagues in the 1930s, uh, Bingo Long, Traveling All-Stars and Motor Kings. And that was a fun movie to do. Uh, Lady Sings the Blues, um, Mahogany, a movie I did called Hit that I really enjoyed that Sidney Fury uh, directed. Uh, there, oh, even, even though it was a tough shoot, the um, movie I did with Stallone, uh, Night Off, yeah. And, and then I did a movie, I, I've done movies, I did one movie here in, uh, in uh, Canada uh, for a Canadian company, a, a movie called Giant Steps about a jazz musician uh, and his relationship with this uh, young kid who was an aspiring jazz musician and that was a real a great character to play. But uh, I, you know, did quite a few, I've done a lot of movies throughout the years. I've been doing this for 50 years. It's a long time. But the, the experiences, you know, each experience is, uh, uh, I'm very fortunate, let me put it that way, to be able to have been able to make a living doing this, because a lot of people do this, and, you know, I have real difficulty in making a living. But uh, and if, if you you know, can have that kind of success, I mean, it's just phenomenal to live one's life that way. What advice would you have for people who are aspiring actors or performers? Well, you have to dedicate yourself and if you really want to do it and uh, know that you can go through whatever uh, machinations that, uh, that 
one has to go through in order to gain success. You just have to work hard, study hard, and be dedicated. A lot of times people play pranks and things like that on sets. Were there any really big pranks that any of you guys did on the Star Wars sets to each other? Not that I recall, no. Has there been any on any of your sets before? And you mean in those situations? Yeah. I'm sure I can't remember anything. <laughs> yeah, there's always little things going on. Welcome to Halifax. Uh, a couple of years ago, you did an episode of White Collar. Where you got to sing jazz with Diane Carroll. Mm -hmm. What was that whole experience like? Well, I know you know that was fun. Uh, I enjoyed that. Uh, well, I know Diane uh, since we, we went to high school. We went to the same high school together. Which I think she was a couple of years ahead of me. Uh, but uh, so I've known her for a long, long time. We also did Dynasty together. I think something else we did, I don't remember exactly what, but she was uh, quite a uh, very charismatic kind of individual in high school, I remember that. Uh, I remember when I first entered the, uh, my freshman year, I used to see her walking down, up and down the corridors to, to go to her classes, and, and she always seemed like the Pied Piper to me, there was, always seemed to be a lot of people behind her, because she had such an incredible energy, and she was a very elegant woman. And I enjoy elegance. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Billy. How are you, sir? I'll do pretty good. So. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really. Uh, have a wonderful time here with us. What? Hope you have a wonderful time with us. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't know if you remember me. I'm um, still in thirty-seven. <laughs> Shot of your skate pistol. <laughs> Saying that you shot him while you escaped. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Are you better? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I have a couple questions for you. Right now. Um, one was about uh, going back to when you did Harvey Dent in Batman. Mm -hmm. If you actually had the chance to rephrase the role of Harvey Dent and become Two Face in Batman Forever, would you have done it any differently than Tony Jones did? Oh, yeah, I'm sure I would have. I don't know exactly what I what I would have done, but uh, what I had been I was looking forward to doing it, but it just, it just didn't work out. That's too bad. I actually thought like, you probably would have done a really good Harvey Dent. I, I think it would have worked very nicely. I, it would have been different, um, and I don't know why they didn't uh, follow up on it. I think it would have been much more. Although Tommy Lee Jones, yeah, he's a great actor. Uh, he's always good in whatever he does. Uh, I certainly, yeah, I, I would have done it differently. I don't know what I would have done, but I'm certainly sure that, that it, would, it would have been different. Well, I can assure you that it would probably be absolutely amazing. Well, thank you for saying that. Come back to the Star Wars universe. Uh, even though there hasn't been a whole lot of information going on about the new episode 7, whereas they have, were George Lucas, sold to Disney. Um, there's no lot of speculation that some people say Disney may not do so good. Some are saying that they'll do it better. If you had your own opinion on it as to whether Disney will actually do a, be a good job, but better job, <coughs> or if they may kind of drop down in everyone else's expectation, what do you think that Disney would, would do? Do you think they'd do it better? I, 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 it's, it seems like a perfect place for uh, that uh, kind of m m movie, genre movie, to be a part of or go to. I mean, it seems to me that it's, it's a great idea. I mean, they do that kind of stuff, so it's perfect. And J.J. Abrams, I mean, he, you know, he has a great reputation for doing that kind of stuff, so, I don't know, it sounds, it sounds like a pretty perfect uh, setup to me. Who knows? Oh, we just shot him. Hey there. Hi. Uh, during your acting career, before you started, did you have role models from movie history, um, any big actors, inspirations, what guided you as an actor? 
No, there were quite a few that I always enjoyed watching in the movies. Uh, uh, but we're talking about way before you were born. Uh, you know, I always, I, I always loved Cagney. I always loved Edward G. Robinson. I always liked the little guys, the little tough guys. Uh, Brando was a big, big uh, part of my life when I was coming up. Uh, Poitier was a big part of my life. Um, Brando, I met Brando. I met him through uh, a good friend of mine, James Baldwin, who was a great author. Uh, uh, he took me up to his house, and, uh, and, and of course, I, you know, I'm in Aries, and April 6th, and Brando, I think it's April 3rd, so that was a big thrill for me. So we, we sat, I remember we sat in, uh, in his library, the two of us, just the two of us, just talking about politics because he was very much involved with uh, in politics. And that was, uh, he, 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 he of all of the actors, I really identified with a lot. We got time for just a couple more, so Indiana, you're up. I'll speak as fast as I can. Mr. Williams, welcome, thank you for coming. Thank you, you look great in that hat. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Um, look like a superhero. <laughs> You are, you kind of are a superhero. <laughs> I, I want to say two things about why I want to say thanks for getting involved in the Star Wars. Star Wars came out, the first movie that they weren't in, came out in 1977. It was in the perfect age demographic. I was 10 years old. I walked into a theater, came out with my world kind of rocked and turned on its ear. But I'll admit, I think I'd only seen a few movies at that point in my life. You got involved in Empire Strikes Back. And there's like a gold mine of great movies from the 70s and the 80s that I think I wouldn't have sought out or watched if I hadn't seen you then in them and went, it's Lando, it's Bill, because he's from Star Wars. So many movie, uh, so many movie actors get sort of uh, typecast, or you think, I, you know, you would think of Harrison Ford's solo plays, Indiana Jones. But when I saw you for the first time, it was Lando Congress. Then I see you in other movies, and it made me interested in watching those movies. And as a, as a result, the gift was that I got to see a lot of movies that I maybe never would have watched, sought them out, gave them a chance, really opened my mind to a lot of things that were way beyond science fiction, just drama, human drama, emotion, adult ideas. And you opened the door, so thank you for doing that. That was a, it was a great thing. I don't, The flip of that is thanks for getting involved in the Star Wars universe because you did it so cool. A lot of people could have read that Lando role and said, okay, I get it. I'm the guy who's the friend and I betray somebody, and then I'm like, you know, it's it's a betrayal. I'm gonna play it like a jerk. And I know that some people have picked on you and said, oh, you turned I I get what Lando did. He was backed into a party, he did the only thing he could. And then he tried to make some plans to make things work out the best way they could. Sure, Han got frozen for a while, but you were gonna go get him. You were gonna help everybody get out of there. So, but the thing that you did in a movie genre that had kind of reinvented itself as like the star, the, the, the space cowboy, is you were the space playboy entrepreneur. You did it so cool. You, to this day, you are the coolest guy in the galaxy. So sh shaky, but I'm so nervous talking. Oh, well, I appreciate it. So I appreciate your comments. Thank you so much. Um, one question I'd like to ask you is, um, what was your childhood like leading up to your acting career? Uh, my acting career actually started when I was six and a half, half years old. Uh, I had my first ex uh, experience. Uh, in a Broadway musical uh, written by uh, Kirk Vile. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Kirk Vile wrote uh, with Berthold Brecht, uh, Three Penny Opera, and lots of other famous, well-known songs uh, at, at that period. And I was on stage with uh, his wife, uh, La Helenia, and I played the little page boy, and I had, uh, I had 
two things I had to do. I had to come on stage the first time and sing, Make way for the Duchess, for her grace the Duchess. Make way for the Duchess, for her legal, legal Duchess. And then I come back on the second time with a message from the Duchess. Message from the Duchess, from her grace the Duchess. Message from the Duchess, from her legal, legal Duchess. Anyway, that was my... And actually, uh, when I auditioned for the role, I, I, they had me walk across the stage one time and the second time, and I wanted to do it the third time, and they wouldn't let me do it, so I started crying. So, I always said I cried my way to show business. <laughs> Huge fan! Thank you so much for coming to Halifax. Uh, I got uh, two questions. Mm -hmm. One: um, Why were you wearing Han Solo's clothes at the end of Empire Strikes Back? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well as quiet as it's kept for the night. No. <laughs> one of the answers. The other answer is, uh, well, the final answer. There are about three different answers, but the final one is this. George Lucas, that was his decision. I don't know really what the reason is. What is the reason? Derek? Yes. That's Derek Mackey. So uh, it's because he actually owned the Falcon originally, and when Han opened the closet, he went, wow, I look good in those. <laughs> Double-crossing, no-good swindler. <laughs> Double-crossing, no-good swindler. <laughs>